Good afternoon, all of you. My name is Lakshmi Khan. I completed my post graduation in English from Calcutta University in 2004. I joined as a lecturer in English at Jodhpur Junior College in 2004 itself and served for five years. Later, I joined Saint Martin's Engineering College in 2009. Since then, I have been working as an associate professor in English. Here. Today, I am going to deal with the the topic phonetics, which is a lab topic, very first unit. It is phonetics is the branch of linguistics, and it is also considered. It is called the scientific study of speech sounds of a language. And we have three types of phonetics. One is articulatory phonetics. The second one is acoustic phonetics. And third one is auditory phonetics. What is articulatory phonetics? Articulatory phonetics teaches us how to pronounce or articulate words. And acoustic phonetics says about how it travels in air and reaches to the listener. That is acoustic phonetics. And auditory phonetics teaches us how to perceive or receive the sounds and decode them. And here, Why do we need to learn phonetics as a special topic in English? The real reason here, letters in English alphabet are 26, whereas sounds are 44 in number. It means one letter can be pronounced more than in one way. In the same way, one sound can be produced or represented with more than one letter. Due to this discrepancy, we need to learn phonetics. Before going into the depth, how the sounds can be showed or represented with letters and how a letter can be represented with a sound. We need to learn what is the mechanism involved in the sound production. Because here in human body, we have speech organs. Here in, the, in human body, we have the chest. In the chest we have lungs, that lungs can push the air into the throat and it reaches to the throat in which we have two pipes. One is food pipe and another one is wind pipe. Food pipe can be used to take food or water, whereas wind pipe can be used, can be used to get into that inhale or take that air in and release air out. In that wind pipe we have the sound box or voice box that is called vocal cords or vocal cords. And here from that vocal tract that air reaches into the mouth and it can be modified and released. In a way that particular mouth we have speech organ, the very active articulator in the mouth is the tongue. The tongue can be shifted from one place to the other, front to back, or back to front, or central, and it can be contracted with, contacted with the other organs of speech. What are the remaining organs of speech in the mouth? Let us see here. In the mouth, we have lips, okay, here, which can be used as other articulators, and the teeth. Above the teeth, we have teeth ridge that is also called alveolar ridge. Above the teeth ridge, we have hard palate, with, in which we have that uh, skin very hard. And above the hard palate, skin seems to be soft, so it is called soft palate. Above that, we have the empty space or hollow space that is called oral cavity or nasal cavity. That nestles can be connected in the mouth. And above that, we have uvula inside. These are the speech organs. Entire that received sound air can be modified and released. This is the technique or mechanism involved in sound production. 
and here we can have the sound symbol in this phonetics let me just transcribe it means convert into phonetics the same word here with the few sound symbols look at here in this we have the sound symbols are for names f a n a t e t and s these are the sound symbol are we can call the ipa symbol international phonetic alphabet symbol and we use in india british english as our standard and the pronunciation is called received pronunciation these are basic terms and here if you take any particular word like here about in this particular word this particular letter can be showed or represented with the sound a about if you take the word father in this particular word a can be pronounced or showed with the long vowel a if you take the word m a n man it is pronounced in the other way that is man a single letter a can be represented with more than one sound and if you take any particular word like the same letter if you take chemistry the representing sound is the k and if you take case c a s e the representing letter is the k it means one letter with different sounds and here one sound can also be represented with more than one letter due to that reason we need to learn phonetics as a special case a special study and here all the 26 letters can be showed with 44 speech sounds these are called phonemes and these phonemes can be divided as vowels and consonants vowels means vowel sounds they are 20 in number and consonants are consonant sounds they are 24 in number what is the difference between vowels and consonants vowels can be produced without any obstruction of air pass the air flow it means a free air flow there is no stoppage of air just let us see once here a a u u A A. As we speak in Indian script or Indian language, we have say. And here, these again uh, consonants. Consonants can be produced through some kind of friction, some kind of obstruction of a passage, and some kind of stress that we can use them. Here, we can produce them with the okay explosive explosion. And here. these twenty vowels are subdivided into subdivided into two types they are monophthongs monophthongs means single sound unit these are also called pure vowels monophthongs are pure vowels they are 12 in number and here the remaining eight are diphthongs these are also called glides or gliding sounds they are eight in number why do you say these glide because the tongue in the mouth can shift or move from one place to the other so they are called glides and pure vowels without any motion or movement we produce them twelve let me produce the list of total 12 pure vowels here the very shortest sound in english is a it is lighter sound whereas the louder sound that is a second level of a it can also be called schwa or yes it is the w schwa or schwa it can be used before a word which is unstressed vowel and here the third category this is the first sound this can be used before r as silent r earn learn for 
Next, the fourth variety of a sound is a long vowel a. And here we have the fifth variety a sound. A variants are five number, whereas the remaining sounds are capitalized symbol is e. And small i with colon mark is e. And u sound is u letter is u. And u with colon mark u. And lower case e is a. And the remaining two sounds are o and o. Total verb a, 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 o, a, e. E, U, U, E, O, O. And here the remaining eight diphthongs are gliding toward a particular sound. Gliding toward a, ya, uva, e, a. Gliding toward a. And here gliding toward e, a. Oi, I. This also can be showed as I. And the remaining two sounds are O and O. These are the like total eighteen number E A U A E A A O I I O and O. Total twenty vowel sounds. Based on the position of the tongue, how in here in the mouth, these vowels are also can be classified as front vowels, back vowels, and central vowels. And the mouth position, closed position, half closed position, half open position, and open position. And the consonants can be classified to three ways. They are manner of articulation. Second one, place of articulation. And third one, voice of articulation. There is no subclassification or subdivision at all, but all 24 sounds can be produced or explained through manner of articulation. The way how we modify them, for example, plosives, p l o s i v e s, explosive manner, p b t d k g, fricatives, f w t d sh j n, and here. Through nose also we pronounce some sounds. They are called nasal, m, n, and n sound. Nasal. They are three number. And here we have all twenty-four vowels in manner of articulation and place of articulation. In this place of articulation, as we have already learnt about the speech organ. Some speech organs can, it means one, some, some piece of, okay, some particular organ of speech can involve in the production of a particular sound. If I say bilabial, labial refers to lip, they are pa, ba, ma, wa, pa sound, ba sound, ma sound, and wa sound. Why do you say these are bilabial? The reason here, lips are contacted together. This is the p. Next b. Next m. Contacting together. Lower lip and upper lip. But in the production of wa sound, lips are not contacted. But the lips are rounded. Wa, wa. So these are called bilabial. In the same way we have labial dental. In the same way we have dental, etc. And here voice of articulation. What is voice of articulation? In the production of consonant sounds, here vocal cords uh, can be vibrated. If we have that more vibration of vocal cords, they are called voice or voice consonants. 
and if they are not vibrated much uh, less if they have less vibration they are called voiceless consonant how can we recognize them in the word voiced consonant if you take these two sounds p and b by just using the palm on the throat and the forehead p if i say p here there is less vibration if i say b b means louder more vibration based on the vibration of vocal cord all these consonants can be pronounced are used as voice and voiceless vibration so consonant thank you